Uh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. How are you? Uh, uh, we are all fine, though we are just locked down as you are. <laughs> but, but we thought that this is the best way that we should have the different facets of law known through, firstly from Mr. Siddharth Lutra, then from you. There couldn't <laughs> be a better way to make an entry for all different aspects of law. And the, right. and the fact that you have made these st strings, it looks that it will be a very fantastic session. And people were always willing to hear you. Hmm. Um, as the topic for today is, everybody on the platform knows, regarding law, the manner of compensation, as well as rehabilitation. Land has always been a clo closer to the heart of everyone. Maybe it is a small time land holding or a big time person who is into this investment. And everybody whose land is being acquired gets, gets jittery on that aspect and then he has to contact a lawyer. Yeah. And if he has a lawyer like you, nothing to beat it. And today when people will hear you on different aspects, what are the entire gamut of the land acquisition, how the land is acquired, how you can be rehabilitated, what is just and fair compensation? Because land being acquired is on different levels by private, by NHI, off late, and the latest judgment of the indoor development. Hearing from you would always be a pressure. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, over to you. We can start off. We are at 11. Right. Thank Hello. you. Uh, yeah, can everyone pin my video o and mute themselves if that's possible? Uh, uh, we, 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 have, uh, we have muted everybody. All right. All right. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Land acquisition is a subject which a lot of people find a little complicated, but in fact, it's one of the ones we know uh, aspects of land acquisition. Uh, it you'll find that it's actually a very simple subject. Now, what's most interesting is land. How important is land as compared to human rights of, say, freedom of expression, uh, freedom to form associations, all the freedoms which are in, including right to equality, Article 14, 19. Now, question would be, is right to property at one time in India, right to property was a fundamental right. It is no longer a fundamental right. And for that, we have to see when civil rights movement started, when uh, the various thinkers like Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, Voltaire started um, forming what is society, what is the state. In so far as Locke said, he said, really, it's basically to protect property that a state is formed. And um, Abraham Lincoln's quote is what I'd like to begin with. He says, in so far as government lands can be disposed of, I'm in favor of cutting up the wild lands into parcels so that every poor man may have a home. There's something which either Rousseau or Voltaire said, which who's, who says that, look, the first man who said this land is mine and the second man who believed him are the persons who are responsible for forming the state. In COVID times, we are coming to realize that neither land is ours and the environment is not just for us, it's for everyone. When the blood is in your veins, returns to the sea, and the earth in your bones returns to the ground, then you will remember that this land does not belong to you. It is you who belong to this land. John Locke. John Locke is considered to be one, as far as the United Kingdom is concerned, he was he's one of the greatest political uh, thinkers. 
and as uh, in United Kingdom he and in France Rousseau and Voltaire that shaped civil rights that shaped what the modern state is they said um, a theory of private property that justifies individual title on the basis of labor is actually what is property though the earth be common to all men yet every man has a property in his own person this nobody has any right to but himself the labor of his body and the work of his hands we may say are properly his whoever then he removes out of the state that nature had provided and left it in he had mixed his labor with and joined to it something that is his own and thereby makes it his property it being by him removed from the common state nature placed it in it had by this labor something annexed to that that excludes the common right of other men so this is how we can say this is mine and that is yours and that is the state's now the state has always had the right which is called in the us eminent domain an expression which we also have adopted over the years or land acquisition as recognized in the uk and in india so what is eminent domain to be exercised for and how short, sh how far should the state go in exercising eminent domain if we need and in today's day we need infrastructure projects we need dams we need roads take the delhi chandigarh highway how much land would have been acquired for it take um, uh, the agra expressway take the agra lucknow expressway how much land how much rehabilitation how much resettlement how how much we changed the lives of the farmers that were tilling that land this right of eminent domain has to be exercised with balance and the us in article 5 says no person shall be deprived of property without due process of law nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation in india also the law has been similar our old act was in 1894 act when the 2013 act it had been in operation for just 119 years now the when the east india company and the and great britain ruled over us at that time this old archaic land acquisition act of 1894 served its purpose but did it serve its purpose 50 or 70 years later to my mind not and that's why we have the 2013 act 2013 when i would on the conclusion part i'll come to the amendments uh, being proposed in 2014 which as i will discuss later have not been brought into law and um, why was it required it it the new act got became necessary because you need to have fair processes you need to give principles of natural justice uh, a voice you need to have an adequate compensation affected parties and their land ownership needs to be looked at in keshavanand bharti and after that the 44th amendment of the constitution came into being in 1973 supreme court the question was whether compulsory land acquisition would infringe right to property right to property was removed from the fundamental rights and it became part of article 300a so it went away from fundamental rights now what was the what were the grievances 
against the land acquisition 1894, which was sought to be redressed by the 2013 amendment. So one was just everything was public purpose. You name it, and they gave it the name of public purpose. Some uh, during, for example, the time when the chief minister was Mr. Saab Singh Verma, he felt that we needed to form some infrastructure for the villages. So even though there was a master plan in place, he envisaged what was a mini master plan for each village or each block of villages so that there would be a school, there would be infrastructure, there would be uh, playgrounds, there would be maybe medical facilities. That was struck down by the Supreme Court in Deepak Bhardwaj. I may discuss that later if we have time. Then adequacy of compensation. In India, as we know, compensation is a very vexed issue because sale deeds sometimes reflect even a one-fifth of the land price. If sale deeds are taken as the marker, then the land prices were so absolutely low that people were being deprived of their land at a pittance. And I'll give you one or two examples, including the one uh, uh, of land near Hyde Regency, which was acquired as recently as in the 2000s. Then public purpose. Uh, Supreme Court discusses this in Munilal as well as in Aflatun, I think Aflatun's 1973 Supreme Court. Public purpose, planned development of Del Delhi, planned development of any city. That was a sufficient public purpose. You didn't even need to show public purpose, just this definition. If you needed it for slum dwellers, you called it public purpose. If you needed it for residential, you called it public purpose. If you needed it for sending up some co commercial complex, you called it public purpose. So public purpose became this stick to beat the people with, by which land was acquired without their being as much justification and acquired under emergency clause. Now, one of the aspects was emergency clause being inv invoked so that Section 5A, which calls for hearing objections of people, that neither there is a public purpose and that, that their land should not be taken, was then dispensed with. And most judgments during the, that period of the 70s, 80s, 90s, public purpose and dispensation of 5A was upheld by the courts. Now, in this background, I, there have been agitations in various parts of the country, but I'll discuss only three, four, because uh, the idea is just to discuss compensation um, in, in some detail in this. Now, one of the most important judgments, and these judgments had social and political overtones. So the Narmada Bachao Andolan was um, basically to save, to save people living along Narmada. And while when I discuss this, and I discuss the 2013 Act, one of the important aspects is the right of tribals. Tribals live on the land. They either, the land may belong to them, they may be using forest land, they use uh, uh, forest produce for their survival. The moment such lands are acquired, these persons become without a livelihood. These persons become roofless. Suppose they own the land, even then, even if they get a, some amount of money, that money in their hands is frittered away, and then you have jobless people who have given in to alcohol sometimes because they've suddenly got cash monies. And also people whose, 
who lived in communities. In those communities, they had their family, they had their infrastructure. You couldn't even sell out of the tribal land. But the moment you had land acquisition, all that went. Now, Narmada, actually, uh, the, there were huge protests. Uh, you would be, uh, this was envisaged by Nehru so that people of Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, people along Narmada River were, 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 who were being displaced, formed this movement under Medha Patakar. The dam was several dams, including the Sadar Sarovar Dam. And in fact, it was envisaged during Jawala Nehru's time, 1947, he calls the dams uh, temples of modern India, because he looks at development being necessary, which is true. But what we have to look at is a concept of sustainable development. And it can, can't be even more true in COVID times than it is at that time. So in 1961, he starts going ahead with Sadar Sarovar plan. Now look at two, there will be two or three timelines, which according to me are very important. One is that the World Bank envisages an interest and says it will fund it with thousands of dollars of aid. And then there are these protests and World Bank tries to get, say, rehabilitation, resettlement, and finally pulls out of it. So I'll give, share the timelines. Some of the important timelines are what I have given in this. What happens is the matter goes to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court grants a stay in the first instance. Then after several years, I think it was six, seven years later, and there's a World Commission on Dams. Nelson Mandela gives his report. And in 2006, finally, it said, work on the dam has to be resumed, go fast. Then what is pertinent is the height of the dam is increased. Many more people are displaced. Many, many more people are displaced. But the issue in the mines of academics and environmentalists have still been, were they displaced for good reasons? And was that height ready, required? Or would the lesser height have been sufficient? The popular opinion is that lesser height would have been sufficient. Now it displaced 2,50,000 to 3 lakhs of people. Uh, of course, this translates to almost 100 acres or 37,000 hectares of land. But it did give water to 40 million people. It gave irrigation to Gujarat. It gave water to a drought uh, invested area like Rajasthan. It gave electricity. It gave money to the state. Question is pros and cons. Infrastructure is necessary. It should be sus sustainable development, and it should be in such a manner that you have to do the minimum, bare minimum, and bare minimum displacement. Now, how do you compensate those thousands and thousands of village, villages which were had to be removed for the dam? Now, there are people who you're close to your next door neighbor. You're close to your next friend in villages. How do you, if one person is giving, given replacement in Gujarat, another person is told you go to Madhya Pradesh or someone's given money, is that sufficient? Is that enough to rehabilitate and resettle or have we uprooted them and have made them uh, people, homeless people for the rest of their lives. This uh, whole discussion, Medha Patikar did a great service, although her 
Finally, she had lost the case, but the fact is it brought to forefront the requirement of sustainable development. The Tata Nano project in Singur, West Bengal, is even more interesting. So uh, the Tatas, the uh, Ratan Tata had wanted to have his pet project, the Nano Car, and land was taken at Singur. It's 997 acres, I think. And um, there were agitations, there were protests, went to a single judge of the Calcutta High Court uh, where they lost, went to division bench where Tata succeeded, went to the Supreme Court where Tata lost again, just two judges, Justice Gauda and Justice Mishra. Justice Gauda says for different reasons. One says, can't see a public purpose, the other says, I don't see five way dispensed with fairly, five way should not have been. So on these two grounds, the acquisition, in the meantime, the Tata Motors said, we look at an alternate land in Sanand, in Gujarat. And of course they moved the project. Um, this was when Ms. Mamta Energy was in the opposition. In a sense, it was her flagship uh, agitation and really paid her high dividends. The question here is, why did the acquisition fail? It failed because the consideration was poor. It failed because there was no consent clause when it was being taken for a company. Aspects which have been rectified in the 2013. There was no rehabilitation. There was no resettlement. And food security was not considered. And this is one of the laudatory purposes of the 2013 Act, that where there are multi-crops irrigated land, then it should, as far as possible, not be taken. Now. The what happened was is history that Tata moved its nano project to Gujarat. But who was the loser? In a sense, the state of West Bengal was the loser. State of Bing West Bengal lost a brilliant project by one of the premier companies of this country. And one would have adequately compensated if the law envisaged that. And more important, it lost so much employment. It lost thereafter. The history says that these farmers then tried to look for alternate after some time, somebody else to acquire their lands. But that didn't happen. And therefore, in a sense, it is a lost opportunity, though the political repercussions were immense, uh, positive for some and negative for some. In all in all, if we'd had the 2013 Act, perhaps the project would have gone through very smoothly. Now look at um, the Noida development project in Noida, Greater Noida. Uh, land was acquired under planned industrial development in Gautam Bodh Nagar. It's almost an amount of 1,455 acres of land. Urgency clause was invoked. Again, the question was, in today's day, if it had been under the new act, uh, this would not have been because it was being taken for companies. Section 102 would have been looked into where if a company is given the land, then 40% of their pay up and profits would have reverted to the farmers. Now, uh, the Several of the writ petitions, since very many villages were acquired. In first instance, Supreme Court upheld with regard to several villages. Then there were other villages 
like Sabari, where the acquisition was quashed. In the meantime, the investors and builders had already gone ahead with home buyers. So there were home buyers whose, like, whose, uh, whose stakes were there, small home buyers. There were farmers who, who were agitating. There were the uh, builders, investment, investors who had put in a lot of money, whose projects were quashed, some of them. And uh, urgency clause was clearly not fairly invoked, which was being done as a standard. Uh, what happened was that the Supreme Court upheld most by saying that enhanced compensation, sorry, in the last one, enhanced compensation of 64.7% to 1400 per square yard. So that the farmers became happy, but the investors did lose out, the home buyers did lose out, and Greater Noida and Noida authorities have not kept this in mind, which has, to my mind, not been worked very fairly by the state authorities, but that is part of an ongoing issue and therefore nothing finally can be said on this. Uh, the South Korea tried to, there was a project implementation requiring 2,900 acres, Poxo company, POSCO company were, was to take it over, but the question was there was um, opposition by people. The um, NC Saxena committee said that Forest Rights Act not taken into account and ultimately POSCO project moves out of India. Do we want these projects to go away if they are indeed for the interest of the people? We don't want them to go away, but we also want to look that they don't impact. And that's why now a assessment of a social, um, um, an, a, an attempt in order to have an assessment of the entire situation. Where should the land be acquired? How should we acquire? How do we address the grievances of the people? How do we provide them safeguards? How do we provide them settlement? How do we compensate them enough? How do we not, we ensure that the urgency clause is not abused? How, how do we ensure that, for example, acquisition for Delhi Agra Highway, Agra Lucknow Highway, there have been plantation order, the plantations ordered in terms of the uh, uh, environment uh, guidelines and enactments. And that now this results in the present enactment, the LARR Act 2013. Now, uh, the attempt is it should be transparent, there should be consultation, there should be rehabilitation and resettlement, there should be least disturbance. Of course, there will be disturbance. And our projects and infrastructure in India has been growing for leaps with leaps and bounds from the 1990s. So how do you ensure just and fair compensation? The government may actually want to, when it enacts, say it wants to give just and fair compensation. But when it comes to practice, the collector will always try and be conservative, overly conservative give as low a rate as possible. Various amendments which had come into the Land Acquisition Act over the years of 1894 have also been brought in here. Um, so market value means the value of land determined under 26. Some of the guidelines in the old judgments have been incorporated. Uh, including the importance of the sale deeds of the locality, of the area, this earlier proceeding of um, taking, um, giving the agricultural land and saying it's what class of land, all that has been given up. And one looks at various parameters of seeing who is a person interested in the award. 
Now, this is the manner in which the 2013 Act improves on the 1894 Act. Look at compensation. We can go on further on it, but one aspect which will come out in this slide is the social impacts assessment, which is mandatory, except in cases of urgency. And public purpose is somewhat sought to be described under Section 2. Then another aspect which comes out is for rural and urban, for rural, it may go from one time to two times the market value. Um, for urban, it will be one time. And solatium will be, instead of 30% under the old act, it will be 100%. Rehabilitation and resettlement attempt is that it should be mandatory. Now, if a uh, brief look at some important provisions, they are very similar, except for the requirement of social impact assessment, rehabilitation, reassessment, uh, and resettlement, and compensation, and greater attempt at actually taking the market value. So how is that being sought to be done? Um, so the sections which deal with compensation are 26 to 29, and uh, 102 is important if it's being given to a company. 80 is important with regard to interest. Uh, so this is pre-notification social impact assessment conducted by the appropriate government. And this report to be examined by independent expert group. So all this becomes significant. The question whether if that's not complied with, whether it will fail is something which the courts will have to look at. Uh, I will come later to section 24. That's actually long enough um, and a large enough subject that it may require a separate webinar. But uh, in this, I'm just going to concentrate now further on uh, the compensation, which apart from the value increase and the solatium increase, it's main, majorly similar to what was there in the old act, but these differences are very, very significant. And the award for rehabilitation and resettlement, which is given in the second schedule, which provides can provide for employment, can provide for some 3,000 rupees for first year per month to be given, can provide for 5 lakhs or 2,400 over 20 years, 2,000 over 20 years, are something which may be significant and are a great improvement on the earlier act. Now, the illustration makes it very clear. It's very simple. If rural land is 10 lakhs, then multiplying it, it cannot need not be only by two. It's one is one to two as envisaged in the first schedule. And then you add the value of the assets. You add what is growing on the land, what cultivation is there, et cetera. And in urban areas, it will be one time. So, and to both, you will add solatium. So in cases of uh, rural land, it may actually be four times the market value if the state gives you twice and the solatium 
doubles it. So that's how the values will come. If you can see it, it's very simple in this slide. Now, these are the various enactments, section 26. The collector shall adopt the following criteria in assessing and determining the market value of the land, namely the market value of any specified in the Indian Stamp Act for the registration of sale deeds or agreements to sell, as the case may be in the area where the land is situated. The average sale price for similar type of land situated in the nearest village or nearest vicinity a uh, consented amount of compensation as agreed upon uh, under subsection 2 of section 2 in case of acquisition of lands for private companies or for public private partnership projects now very interesting uh, supreme court had ruled in various ways including in 99 supreme court that if two villages are near each other I think it was the case of Mahipalpur and Rangpuri. Then you can't just say that because they are joining, the rate should be the same. Subsequent various high court judge judgments justified that if there are two adjoining villages, for example, Jasola and Bhapur. Now, if you look at Delhi, Jasola and Bhapur means new friends colony and uh, areas next to that, both of which are extremely expensive rates now. But at that, initially, they were looked at by the collector as being very, very different. So the High Court, Delhi High Court Division bench in RFA determined to the contrary. There are many, many judgments of many villages which have looked at this. Now, one of the other aspects which will be looked at is section 28, market value after 26, damage, damage in inspection, damage in acquisition. And if people are being made to change their residence or place of business, that'll be looked at. It's interesting in the US, for example, they would look at the fact, uh, so suppose your house is worth 10,000 where it's located at market value, but the Olympics are coming there. Then they'll look, they look because of Olympics, it's going to be 50,000 or five lakhs. And that aspect's also looked at, which isn't in India. But most countries look at market value because their market value, there are no hidden figures. So if this is the value, there won't be a cash component. And therefore, most of them are compensating or are looking at market value that rural and one is to two ratio is not there in most other countries. Now, determination of value of things attached to land, these would obviously be looked at, these additions, but additions which are made after the initial notification under 11, which is the old four, would not be looked at. Now, 30 is laudatory, this solatium. Solatium is your emotional loss, your compensation, your hardship, your, uh, your unhappiness at the acquisition. Now, um, you will see how the land acquisition collectors are being so, so conservative in awarding compensation. So district judge, in this case of Konkan Railways, awards four rupees enhanced, well, collector gives four rupees, district judge enhances to 192, High Court reduces it, giving 85% deduction. Supreme Court says 85% deduction is not good, not fair. It's for laying a railway line and reduces the deduction by 20%. So uh, you'll see several examples of this. Uh, 
the one of the criteria, most important criteria has been sale deals in the past, and they continue now to be virtually to be incorporated and brought in statutory under Section 26. So you look three years before the sale deeds of up to three years ago. And what if you don't find sale deeds of that aid, that village or that exact locality? Then you look at nearby sale deeds. Now, three examples of uh, uh, Punjab in Haryana High Court enhancement to 271%, enhancement to 444%, enhancement to 552%. This just shows that despite the objective of the act, despite the laudatory purpose of the enactment, compensations being awarded by the collector still are absolutely low. And then you come with the criteria, you show circle rates, you show stamp act rates, you show the three, for three years, half of the highest sale deeds, you look at their mean. So it's been sought to be um, categorized such that the room for discretion, the room for arbitrariness is reduced. In this Krishna Kumari Uppal, it's a judgment, in fact, by Justice Sikri when he was in the Delhi High Court. I was one of the counsels. I've done several cases on land acquisition because for tons of years, I was senior standing counsel for the land building department of Delhi government and in the Supreme Court. So in Krishna Kumari Uppal, the land just next to Hyatt Regency was sought to be acquired for the Bhikaji Kama Center. And guess what was the rate? I think it was 2004 it was 47 rupees a square yard that was awarded by the collector. The Delhi High Court thought it was very unfair and the amount finally which the court managed to cajole the state to come up to was 11,500 per square yard. So from 47 to 11,500, I know how many fold increase that is. Um, Landowners submitted, sale deeds were not. Landowners failed to submit site plan. So sale deeds, certified copies of sale deeds, earlier they would say it's necessary to produce either the seller or the buyer. But over the years in the old act, the court started accepting certified copies unless there was something questionable about them. So the, this in the rehabilitation and resettlement package, which is the third schedule, these are the six possibilities. Subsistence allowance, jobs if created. There's a judgment on jobs where the court has said that it's not mandatory to give jobs. I think it's NIDA. I, I'll just refer it to it in a minute. And five lakhs for family or 2,000 with inflation. Plus, if house is lost in rural area, Indra Avas Yojana, if lost in urban area, plinth area shall be provided. Transportation, resettlement. This is, again, much to be appreciated in this act. Then there's social impact assessment. Uh, so you can see what it is. The urgency clause. The urgency clause is 40, is uh, similar to 17, 1 and 4. 17, 1 and 4 was abused uh, in the past. So they've tried to cabin crib and confine the urgency clause. And this is good because this gives room for hearing objections, 
by those who are aggrieved and who are interested and who are adversely affected. The whole purpose of an urgency clause would be lost if everything was urgent. Then you won't, uh, something which is an exception cannot become a rule, and that's what is important. This judgment of Deepak Bhatwaj I just discussed. In Praveen Jain also, uh, there was a quashing of the urgency clause where 200 acres of land in village Palaswa, Jahangirpuri was sought to be acquired. Now, the unfortunate thing about these judge, the, this is that you cannot keep, even with the urgency clause, something remained pending in the court for 16 years. That's too long. And then the court quashes it on non-application of mind. The fact is that in Delhi, lots of there was uh, I was counsel in both these cases. Um, now, this I, uh, why are we going back? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Now the judicial pronouncements, judicial pronouncements on. This could be a separate subject virtually because the Indore Development Authority runs into some 500 pages. The, uh, in short, if I were to summarize it, it would, it would be that Pune holds in favor of landowners for whom compensation not paid or possession not taken. The language as compared to the earlier act was physical possession. Now, the court has how and has distinguished it in that sense from Panchnama possession. But subsequently in indoor development, which is as recent as March of 2020, the first indoor development is February, second is March, and indoor development decided by a bench of five judges. The word or or use or or used in section 24.2 should be either nor or and. So the court has interpreted it to say that even if amounts are deposited in the treasury that is good enough whereas the earlier view was and the way unless this interpretation is given the way it read was that actually it should be tendered to the person or then deposited in court so that's how the expression is i'm not going to go too deep into indore and pune because if i keep going into it as i said we'll um, we will be holding you up for the next two, three, four hours. And that I'm sure you'll find too tedious. So this in short is what is said by Pune Indore and again Indore. And the last word is by the five judges bench of Indore. So that's the final word so far of the Supreme Court, whether there will be subsequent looking again at the section 24 and 24 2 but there's going to be a floodgate of proceedings on it now this um, union of india versus the same is very interesting under the national highway act of 1956 where a lot of uh, acquisition was being made it was partly uh, sidelining this grant of 100% solatium and interest, which is there under the 13th Act. But the Supreme Court said that the National Highways Act was violative because the individual cannot be wronged in the manner denying him solatium and interest under one of two acts, and therefore the 2013 
grant or solatium in interest would inure to the benefit of people. There have been several judgments on this, on 11A, uh, including Padma Sundra Rao, State of Maharashtra, Madan Madan, Ra Modi Ratan Estate, which repeats it, that stay for inures to the benefit. Um, and it also said this in perhaps the full bench of Palakram Gupta, probably decide 1989 Supreme Court, it's saying the same thing. Um, private land of citizens without granting any compensation has been repeatedly held to be violative of Article 14 and 300A. And in Nira Devi, which I referred to earlier, landlord whose land is acquired for construction of railway cannot claim a job as a matter of right. So, 50,000 vigas of land in village Chhatarpur. Actually, it is in 13 South Delhi villages. And this became subject matter of so many proceedings, including Balakram Gupta 1, Balakram Gupta 2, Balakram Gupta. Subsequently, Delhi administration versus Gurdeep Singh Uban 1, Gurdeep Singh Uban 2. I was the counsel in uh, some of these matters the Gurdeep Singh Oban and the others. Now, um, the, there is no binding recommendation of the expert group. So this, in fact, it should have more teeth. Uh, if you are having an expert group, if you are having a so assessment, a social assessment, then there has to be more teeth with it. Public purpose still remains somewhat vague. And uh, there is a scheme that scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, if they are removed, then there should be uh, some uh, guidelines that if they lose their land, then some additional attempt additional uh, compensation but there is no monitoring body for this now there's an amendment bill of which i referred to 2015 this bill has passed rajya sabha uh, lok sabha but it there was no majority and therefore not passed in Rajya Sabha. There was an ordinance, the ordinance lapsed. However, in certain states of the BJP, there have been certain amendments, as you will see, Gujarat, Telangana, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, some aspects in order to emulate, to uh, reduce the rigor, rigors of the 2013 law. Uh, should it be, um, should the rigors be reduced or should they not? In a country like India, to my mind, the rigors to a large extent have to be kept uh, because we have to ensure that, uh, that India, which has 70% rural population, doesn't get displaced, they don't become homeless, they don't become jobless, they don't become rule, uh, you know, roofless. So to some extent, we do need a very rigorous law. Um, that, according, uh, that, according to me, is the need. But having said all that, what I want to conclude is by saying, that we will see a lot of legal proceedings on this five judge uh, bench okay. decision on section 24.2 in the years to come. 
Insofar as compensation is concerned, as the act presently stands, to my mind, many of the disadvantages of 1894 old British archaic law have been corrected. I hope that you found the subject not too boring and not and uh, not too complicated. Uh, to my mind, we will have more and more infrastructure projects and therefore the Land Acquisition Act is, uh, is a legislation on which we will see more and more. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, we have questions in the, uh, posted in the chat box. We will take one by one. And okay. it was a session we cannot express in words. The entire gamut, the Supreme Court took 500 pages to explain Section 24. I thought if you could have curated that entire judgments in such a way, the judgments would have become easy. <laughs> All right. Why well, don't I do that in a in in one or two lines for you? Uh, basically, what Pune said, and so it um, uh, what Pune says is that if you just simply deposit. Uh, money in the treasury or a portion of the major portion of the money in a treasury that's not good enough you have to tender it or you have to deposit it in court either under 18 or 31 but what uh, just let me take let me just take that out but what Indore number one and Indore number two say are this. So Indore number one first says, I'll read para 16 of Indore. The act of 2013 does not envisage the consequence of lap, lapse of acquisition or non-deposit of compensation in court. And neither was it so provided in 31 of the act of 1894. The provision of 24 thus does not contemplate deposit of amount in court, in our opinion. So the whole thing was, the argument in Pune was, if it's to inure to that person, you have to actually tender it to him. You're depositing it in treasury is not enough. Second, even if you uh, tender it to him, he refuses then you have to deposit it in court. But the way the court has, uh, the way Indore, uh, the three judge bench of uh, February said was this, the expression paid, and this is para 41, 55, which according to me and 72 and 218, which are relevant. So the reason I'm uh, just, Quoting five paras is because it may make it too long otherwise. Para 41. The expression paid would mean in section 31, one of the act, as soon as it was offered and made unconditionally available, merely if a landowner refuses to accept it, it cannot be said it has not been paid. Para 55 says, in the instant case, when we give the plain, natural, and grammatical meaning to the word paid tendered, which has been used in contradistinction to the words deposited in court, it is clear that tendering payment would not include deposit in court, in that it is only when payment is refused that the same is deposited in court, obligation to pay is over. So the court says, You've done this, that's over. Whereas Pune said, no, the obligation does not get over. Um, it also says Pune is per incurium. And the court goes on to say, para 72, 
deposit in treasury is stipulated under the rules made with reference to a constitutional provision as <laughs> Sorry, uh, Sorry. 55 of the 1894 Act. So what you what happens is sometimes in the Treasury there is a recurring account, say of a development authority. That account will have say 20 crores. Now that 20 crores can't be used by say 20,000 people. But anyone who wants to use it, they can move applications and get it. Now the question is, is that enough? Or should they have a earmarked amount even in the treasury for that person? Now that's something which has been left a little way because the court says as long as they've given amount in the treasury, it's enough. Sorry. So the way that uh, they have interpreted it is that if the land is acquired 10 years ago, compensation is, no compensation given is not enough for the, under the new act. Uh, no, according to this interpretation, no compensation either tendered or deposited in treasury is what is considered so therefore the expression used in 24 2 in its amendment the word or has been interpreted to be nor and so i'll just show that Provided that where an award has been made and compensation in respect of a majority of land holdings has not been deposited in the account of the beneficiaries, so this one's fine. Now, two, notwithstanding anything contained in subsection one, in case of land acquisition proceedings, and I'm reading 24.2, uh, initiated under the Land Acquisition Act, where an award under the said Section 11 has been made five years or more prior to the commencement of this act, but the physical possession of the land has not been taken or compensation has been, has not been paid. The court has interpreted or as nor, as nor and or and compensation. So it wants possession and compensation and it says so it uses the word and and says both things have not been done so the court then interprets that possession taken equivalent to section 16 of the old act the moment possession is taken you have no right you are only entitled to compensation so the way uh, indore five judge bench has interpreted it is different from Pune, where it says that if comp if possessions taken, that's the end of the matter. And it also treats the compensation part as if compensation has been tendered into the government treasury, that itself is also compliance. So this is both aspects the court has interpreted in a manner to uphold the acquisition under the 1894 Act. So there will be a very narrow window of those persons left who will be able to utilize 24-2 to say their proceedings have to start afresh or you have to pay according to the market value under the new act. Now, one of the questions from Monita Mehta is, 
if the land is acquired for a public purpose, is not utilized for that purpose, and is lying vacant, can the landowner from whom the land was acquired claim it back? In such a case, is the landowner under an obligation to pay back the compensation to the government? So clearly, um, uh, so clearly, uh, in, if if the uh, land is not utilized for that purpose, there are many judgments even under the earlier law on this, which said that if the acquisition to start with was not for a malefied reason, but it was for a bona fide purpose, but ultimately it was utilized for some other purpose. For example, in the metro or other cases, almost 80% of it had was allowed and the question was raised in the Supreme Court. I'm not remembering the citation just now. The court said there is no infirmity if most of the if even if some of the land has been used for some other purpose. The question here is, there is some limitation that if within five years it's not utilized, I think that is how the section uh, envisages it. And that's how it comes. What is the other question now? What happens if possession has been taken, but admittedly the compensation has not been paid through any method? Would the acquisition lapse still notwithstanding? So if possession has been taken, the way the bench of five judges have said is then all you can get is compensation. Ultimately, you'll also be getting interest. When uh, Pune was decided, Pune said that if compensation is not paid, then it lapses. But they are going by that old, uh, I think it was UP Avas or UP Jalnigam, old judgments of 1996 Supreme Court, that the moment possession is taken, it's complete for all purposes. That's how the courts have interpreted it. In so far as 24 is concerned, according to me, it's actually a subject for a complete webinar so that I can give you many aspects of the 500 pages, which I hope will not be incomplete just now, even though I'm trying to address some of them. Now, one of the questions is, uh, once the statute under 24.2 uses were or and. Um, and if you find it convenient, I can read the questions for you. No, no, it's okay. And there being no challenge to worries just because of interpretation ingenuity, the apex goes says were or will mean and. Is it a good ground for a larger bench? Uh, you see, at the moment, the Supreme Court doesn't look to be in the mood for a larger bench because they've just decided it on 4th March. I think time will tell. To my mind, the plain reading uh, could make it possible that subsequently the Supreme Court in a larger bench would look at this because it has taken or to be nor and. So the fact is, that this interpretation is um, perhaps trying to ensure that the amendment which has not come and has not come yet, which is the later proposed amendment, which wasn't passed, that projects which are being held up uh, or acquisitions which are being done where the compensation would run for example, these 13 South Delhi villages, if the compensation uh, which would be given would go into thousands and thousands of crores, whereas if it was done, if it had been upheld in Shivraj, would have been in lakhs or even in a few crores. 
will now go into thousands and thousands of crores. So in a sense, the exchequer saves a lot of money with this interpretation. So there will be state which will want to uphold it and there will be individuals which who would want to challenge it saying that this interpretation could be re-looked at by a larger bench of the Supreme Court. Now, uh, the last, uh, last, uh, this is Shitij Sharma. Although Supreme Court has interpreted 24, that in order for the acquisition to lapse, both conditions need to be satisfied. Compensation has not been paid anywhere. Land has not vested in the government. But can there possibly be a case where the land has not vested from the time of the award? The stipulation of physical possession has not been taken, has been read as land must not have vested. I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand this question. Uh, Ma'am, I will ask. Uh, yes. I, will I will unmute uh, Shetej. Meanwhile, yeah, uh, Kushika uh, Sethi asks, how to decide the ownership of a Lal Dora land? Can Lal Dora land be mortgaged? Can Lal Dora land be mortgaged? See, this uh, is a more a revenue matter than land acquisition. But Lal Dora land, uh, wh whoever is physically in possession would be deemed to be the owner. Now in Lal Dora land, because there are electricity, water, other bills, you know, there will be proof of ownership. Possibly the banks would agree to take it on mortgage to my mind because the difficulty in Lal Dora is that there will be many claimants. There will be people who will try and take possession and show that they are in actual ownership and possession. So um, clearly anyone who will agree to take it on mortgage would look at the aspect as to how long has been the possession of the person. But this is something because it comes in the revenue sphere, I would have to answer uh, with a little more uh, looking in. I'll ask somebody to post it on the chat box. Yes. And meanwhile, Monita Mehta asks, if the land is acquired for a public purpose, is not utilized for that purpose and is lying vacant. Can the landowner from whom the land was acquired claim it back? In such a case, is the landowner under an obligation to pay back the compensation to the government? Firstly, if you get the land back, you'll obviously have to pay compensation. At worst, be payback except for the period when the state remained in possession. So you would get some amount. There's no question you would be able to get deduction of some amount. The question then is, if it's not utilized, see, it's, uh, suppose I acquire something for, say, making a road, and I never intended to make a road there. Then the, but because of purpose can be changed. But if I never intended to make a road there from the inception, and it was a bad exercise, uh, then, of course, you would be able to get back uh, the land. But if it was intended to make, and then the way of, say, your metro or your road changed, then to get it back would be more difficult. Anyway, ma'am, whether the market value and solution as for the new act can be taken for pending uh, acquisition? No, no, it can only be under 2013 law. It can't be unless 24-2 comes into play. Where um, they won't be. You will have to go under the old act. And then uh, Priyanka Mita uh, asked, what is the fate of the mortgager if the property is acquired by the prop authority after they have taken position under the surface? Yeah. Supreme Court. Sorry. SC hand over the uh, properties, including of the mortgage, to any authority since mortgager was not the party to the proceeding. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just uh, will you repeat? 
I might say at 11.38, meanwhile, I will ask Shetaj. Otherwise, Shetaj will say I've been sent to the back burner. Shetaj? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, a very good morning to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for such an informative lecture. Um, uh, I totally agree with you that uh, the judgment clearly needs a separate webinar. Uh, however, only if you choose to answer it only for the sake of brevity is possible. Uh, the section was very clear in terms of using the word or, uh, which uh, you already shared, but now it has been interpreted to mean as nor, either nor or and. That means both the conditions need to coexist and only then would the acquisition lapse. Now, what I was wondering that when the act came into being in 2014 and the act itself says that whatever was initiated five years back. Right. If in that case, the physical possession has not been taken, then it would lapse. Now, obviously, when, when you do land acquisition matters, you do understand that they always and always, even before the award, they always make a panchanama. They always make the entry of the government as being the owner. So once the land has vested, there'll obviously be never any case law in real sense where it would actually lapse because that condition possibly can never be met after five years. So you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, which is why all those later judgments kept coming yes. saying Panchnama is not good not enough. Right. That's true. And which is why the expression used in the 13th Act is physical possession. Physical possession, yes, yes. So that but, is it. But the Supreme Court in this uh, judgment of Indore interprets physical possession as including panchnama and says others will be <laughs> trespassed. It's actually not. I mean, I was wondering what probably a factual scenario would be where it would actually lapse because there will be probably no case where there is no panchnama. There will be panchnamas in all of them. So anyway, but thank you, ma'am. Yes. Uh, yes. uh, I mean, you are right. I feel, I hope at some point the yes. court feels yes. This Relook. needs to be relooked, but this is how it is. We can <laughs> go over the, the um, I was uh, telling uh, Mr. Chatra this when we were starting. He said, no, talk on compensation. I said, I can actually talk on Indore and Pune as a full webinar. <laughs> yes, it can be talked. It absolutely uh, can. Yeah. Ma'am. Uh, so grateful. Uh, so grateful. Uh, in fact, ma'am, it is all because of you that we have been able to have the entire this thing in a 45 50 minutes yes. the judgments yes. Yes. even if, if we the judgments if we start reading yeah. sim simplicity reading itself any judgment takes hours and hours it's you and your entire team who have created that ppt the ppts are wonderful the messages on my mo mobile are continuing to uh, pour in the uh, messages on the chat are also showing that the ppt should be shared because they all feel that this is the best way Whenever there is any trouble, they can just go through your PPT, then it will be very good for them. Ma'am, Amar Vivek asks, once the statute under section uh, 24.2 of the uh, Act of 2013 uses the word or and the Supreme Court in Indore case says it means and, there being no challenge to the same. What is your take to that? I just answered Shidrich on that. <laughs> I mean, the fact is that. Uh, a uh, lot of colleagues, in fact, argued the uh, matter. Uh, I was also to go and argue, but the fact is, we were really saying the same thing. Uh, all of us were saying the same thing, that the language seems so clear, and that Pune and uh, Indore, Indore, which followed Pune, could not have differed from Pune. In that sense, Indore could perhaps have been said to be per incurium. They should have referred it to a larger bench if they weren't agreeing. But on the other hand, Pune has been held to be per incurium. So um, ultimately, we are lawyers. Till the next judgment comes along, we are bound by the five five bench judgment. Uh, that's that's all that I can say for the moment. In the judgments, they also say like. They similarly, you may hate me, you may like me, but you can't ignore me. So ultimately, it is a verdict which counts, which yes. is the final word. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Ankush, Ankush Bansal has posted one question. Okay, I just see. 
I'll just see. Because till the message is spread, I am I am reading that till then another question falls in. If Sarpanch of a village gives funeral land that is common purpose land to some BPL families without any authority for residential purpose, does it fall under public purpose? So, so normally land which is common purpose land uh, and which is meant in this case funeral land normally it can't be given normally gaun sabha land some others such land whenever it is sought to be given it um, has not stood the test of the courts so uh, and here he is saying if it is without any authority but if he is, if uh, Ankush wants me to look for a citation, I'll have to tell him. But uh, otherwise, I've done one or two matters where Gaon Sabha land was sought to be given and the court struck that down. Uh, Ma'am, it will be a botheration, but I've seen your team is doing a wonderful job. The questions which are, are left in certain gray areas, though it will be a botheration, we will ask that you can uh, share that oh, question, answer to that. We will, we will post it. We'll post it in the group. Those sure. persons who are not on our WhatsApp group, they will join in that process. Yes. Sure. Give me the questions and I'll answer them anyway. Yes. Whatever questions are left, uh, which remain unanswered, uh, uh, with the question answer, because I, everybody knows that Luthra's team means everything. And the fact that we are seeing this PPT that shows the hard work which goes behind the actual show. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Under the new act, compensation gets, this is by Rahul Lati. Under the new act, compensation gets tax exemption under section 96, read with circulars 36 slash 2016 of CBDT. Can this be extended under the old act? This question is posed at 1210. So I saw one from Rahul Lathi, which was 1210, ma'am. 1210. Uh, I'm not getting that. Well, ten. I got something at eleven fifty-seven from him. Is uh, that? I will ask oh, now. Oh, oh, twelve oh seven. Under the new Act, compensation gets tax exemption under ninety-six. Read with circular. Circular. Can this? To my mind, no. To my mind, no. Uh, it. Um, so the reason would be that I and this is uh, not necessarily part uh, compensation given for land acquisition. We'll have to just look at logically uh, uh, as far as 96 is concerned, it gives an exemption. But then let's look at the old act and whether that would be counted that we would have to look at the tax law and tax circulars with regard to the old act. Um, so under the new act, it says uh, no income tax or stamp duty shall be levied on any award or agreement made under this act, except under section 46 and no person claiming under such award or agreement shall be liable to pay any fee for the same. Now the fact is if you're being compensated for your land, it's not income in your hand. So even though there is no specific uh, provision like 96 under the old act, um, there, uh, it really isn't income in your hands. To my mind, being compensated for your house is not income. Or compensated for your land is not income in your hand. But this we would have to look at more at the tax angle rather than me giving an off-cuff reply. I think section 96 must be encapsulating in a statute what is already there. Can uh, this be the Saurav, last question after this? Pardon me. Saurav Khurana has posed a question. 
Okay, can it be the last uh, one or do you want uh, more? I'm sort of Quran is posted at 12 11 because we will be running a, a short of time. We go by first question first, otherwise, uh, no, there will be hard burning. Let's there will no, be hard burning. No, no, we but, don't want hard the, the basic principle in our platform is fastest finger first. Yes, uh, yes. please, Sora Kurana, who has been the secretary of our bar please? association. All right, 12 11. Please guide severance compensation is to be granted on acquired land or unacquired land. What is the manner of calculation of the severance compensation? Uh, Hello. So, so to my mind, severance, comp, uh, severance compensation, I'll take out the provision, just take out the provision for severance. So according to me, it should be on the unacquired portion of the land. So because they give you a right that if you really want it to be acquired, then you have that right also. For example, if you have a property of 200 square yards and 100 square yards, no, say 50 square yards has been acquired, then the, uh, the, the, the option in law will be that the balance, either you want it to be acquired or you get so thirdly will be the damage under section 28 the damage if any sustained by the person interested at the time the collector takes possession of the land by reasons of severance of such land from the other land to my mind the the fact that you will no longer enjoy your entire property to the same manner. So you would get severance to my mind for the in uh, as a compensation for the balance land. But I just I would have to look at it. But according to me, it would be for the balance so that if you are taking away 40 square yards and you are left with 160, then that 160 would require compensation or you can move the collector saying please acquire all 200 here's the uh, uh, once your opinion the amount had been deposited in treasury mm -hmm. but have never approached to take it what is the remedy after the indoor development meaning thereby he has accepted the acquisition he he, uh, he has no choice but he says what to go about it how do we, uh, how does he take that money so I think you can, uh, they can go to the collector, they would be able to go even to uh, the judge, the reference court, uh, you can go in writ proceedings. To my mind, um, the, this would, not, would be the least of the problems because they would be more than happy that you take the, take the money. So uh, the first and foremost would be the collector. So you could move the collector and ask because then you have to give indemnity bonds and all that. So the first foremost, you would go to the collector and ask that you want the money. Second, if you don't succeed with the collector, you could go to the reference court. Um, it can be whether you move for enhancement under 18 or under 31 for, or you haven't moved also because you may want it with enhancement. The third would be by filing proceedings. So the first and foremost is the collector. Hello. Yes. Uh, Anurag Jain says, please throw some light on judicial view about the proviso of 24-2. So far it talks about the payment of compensation as per the compensation uh, as per the I'll just read. Huh. I, I saw Anurag that. Jain. I saw that. I saw that. I'm uh, reading the proviso. The proviso says that where an award has been made in compensation in respect of a majority of land holdings has not been deposited in the account of the beneficiaries, then all beneficiaries specified in the notification for acquisition under four shall be entitled to uh, compensation in accordance with the provisions of the 
uh, at. So basically what it's trying to say is, this is fairly uh, simple in that sense that um, if there are say 100 persons and only compensation quad 20 has been deposited and therefore really you haven't deposited for all then for those 20 also this uh, 24 will inure to their benefit so those 20 will also be able to take the benefit of the enactment uh, just for our facilitation one of the participants mr kavan dipendra singh has uh, posted for our, all our convenience. He says sec, under section 194.2 of the Income Tax Act, uh, the same is exempted. Yes. Question which was posed. Okay. With yes. That's what I, I would have uh, thought, but I said it'll be under the Income Tax Act, so I'm not 100% certain, but you know, it's not it's not income in your hands. So well, I'm so thank, grateful to him. Thank you. Uh, that is the one, uh, that is the good part on this group is that people do help uh, pan they participate pan India they they also participate positively also if they have certain inputs they give the judgments etc. Thank you, uh, thank you. I'm just seeing if there any other question is left. Rahul Lati uh, poses a question. There is a mistake in the Act of Section 64 2 sub clause B. Section. 64 sub clause 2, uh, two clause 2 sub clause B limitation of six weeks to file reference starts from notice under section 21. Section 21 is before the award is passed. So, is it legally uh, so? This is legally impossible. This is legally impossible. That's right. There is a lack section, section 64 sub clause 2 sub clause, two, sub clause B. Yes. In then he says. Section 21 is before the award is passed. Yes. So it is legally impossible to do. That's right. That's right. That observation is correct. So? Uh, again, uh, another. Uh, we are through. Ma'am, right. uh, one of the... Uh, thank you for the wonderful session. But before we part, uh, we have a kept a pattern that you will have just to give a five minutes wrap how to make a mark within the profession, what is the take, how to develop the team who can help in such a wonderful fashion the way it has been done by your team. So a five minute wrap up on saying how to make a mark in the profession. Well, so mark uh, would come subsequently how to take the facts from the client, how to draft it, how to create a team like yours. And then how to make a mark. They are all constitutional factors. It is just like one cycle falls in the cycle stand. The other cycles keep on falling. Okay. Okay. Let me let me try and answer it to the best of my ability. So the first thing is um, to my mind for a younger lawyer is uh, an element of patience. What happens uh, is that over the years, uh, you will see clients who will waffle, clients who will not tell you the entire truth, clients who will tell you only that part of the truth which they want you to hear and the answer that they want to receive. And this is an attempt by them to make you not be able to think for yourself and think through their lens. So, you know, a client who really wants, for example, that uh, he, he wants a particular relief, he will ask or tell you only that part of the picture which makes, you, makes him hear that, yes, this is the relief you'll get. But to give a client relief, the first most important aspect is that you have to know the pros and cons. So one aspect is somehow to give that patience, give that assurance that first they have to tell, share the entire facts with you. Then give you a chance to assimilate those facts. There will be cases where your knowledge of law 
there will be cases where your knowledge of law will be uh, will be sufficient for you to give him an off the cuff answer to my mind it's better always if you are not fully sure of your answer to revert to the client and call him for the second meeting when you give him your view second how do you establish i think motivation how do you establish good uh, good colleagues good associates first most important respect them uh people love to be appreciated people love to be respected and they deserve that respect when they work so hard a lot of my colleagues i may get tired at 11 or 12 and you have to lead by example so you can't just say i'm going off every day and think that they'll only do the work you have to be participative in their effort second you have to lead by example so you have to work very hard and uh, encourage uh, be open with them learn get appreciate their feedback some of the feedback may actually they will learn over a period of time that they have to give sensible well thought out feedback they can't just off the cuff say anything and waste their time and your time so whenever they come uh, i remember many years ago my father uh, late father mr kekil utra had a colleague mr malvia who had been with uh, my father for about 35 40 years as his uh, number one associate and really a huge backbone and i would rush to him because it was the easiest thing to do so i'd rush to him and ask him all right my uncle tell me this and say have you read the act have you gone through the act have you gone through the commentary have you if you haven't go away if you have and then you have a problem please come to me but please be fully prepared when you come to me so i think that's um something which is nice i it's all very well to do research online and all that but some time to read the parent act and i saw this um very very early on uh, there was a very heavy land sealing matter that i was doing in bihar thousands of acres uh, in attached to one of the sugar mills and mr bhushan uh, shanti bhushan came for the uh, with me for the leading the arguments on the last day and uh, we sat he took his flight he was there at 7:30 and then he says all right if we are really looking at this act even though the only provision and we had to look at one provision he said even though we only have to look at this provision let's read it from section 1 till the end till then we will have complete silence you read the act i read the act and then we'll go on and this you know sometimes we short circuit things we look at one section which is important for us and we forget looking at the act as a wholesome act so some of these things which you uh, learn to do sometimes you can't really do them um because maybe shortage of time but while one is young this is important uh so it's like devouring a law if you are interested in something devour that law read it and eat it up as if it's consuming you and so that you can follow it and know it for backwards forwards front every way and that is when you can develop nuances and new arguments that's how i feel about this uh, this question more specifically we had asked because they say that the law students and law interns who come from dutra's firm are the best seedlings which grow into actually a good plants and trees so <laughs> they wanted to learn 
what, what are the nuances for that? Thank you, ma'am. And uh, you. we couldn't ask for a better thing. Only one request: if this PPT could be shared on my WhatsApp, I can post it my on my group All number right. one. Sure. And sure. and secondly, Sapanthi, who is also played an active role in the uh, organizing all this. I will ask Sapan to formally propose a vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank and the per and the persons who want to join our group WhatsApp for latest updates, etc. Just I just gave an example why you should be part of the WhatsApp group or a Facebook page or an Instagram. Just because of one typographical error of two instead of five created the entire havoc. But ma'am is so popular that everybody again joined back. So <laughs> once you are on the WhatsApp group and the Facebook page, you will immediately come to know what, what event is coming. And how to go about it? And tomorrow we are having Mr. Puneet Bali, senior advocate, and his topic would be law kitchen. Law kitchen means what are the all cutleries required to how to establish to be a good lawyer. Tomorrow, instead of five minutes wrap, we will have the entire kitchen and let's see the platter should be good. Do connect Please. us, uh, Mr. Sapan. Over to you. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Vikas ji. Thank you, uh, Geeta ma'am. Uh, you, everybody know. that uh, geeta ma'am is a uh, senior lawyer she had been vice president also of indian council of arbitration she was member she is member of international association of family lawyers and uh, ma'am luthra is uh, known for uh, her work legal work and because she has appeared as a counsel senior counsel in several several matters on all facets of life law landmark whether it is criminal constitutional arbitration human rights and i know that i have been gone through your uh, uh, some time of your seminars also where you have spoken as a speaker also on international level and uh, on various issues criminal justice system etc arbitration there is uh, much more to it and i must thank uh, you ma'am for today's session that you have elaborately uh, elaboratedly and enlightened us for this uh, land acquisition uh, cases and uh, the, uh, the law about it and we feel that on our request you will accept our request for come again on some other issue also here Please. on this uh, uh, beyond law clc so i must thank uh, you and your team entire team for on my behalf as well as on behalf of beyond law clc and all other participants to come and to uh, for sparing this time for us for enlighten us uh, on this uh, issue of land acquisition thank you ma'am thank you i'm just before parting can we have the uh, associate who was assisting through we would like to see the asli chehra samne aaye so uh, varun vimal has been assisting pratik yadav has been assisting uh, from chandigarh studied in chandigarh uh, his school and somebody and my daughter shivani has been doing so three so somebody who is sitting adjacent to you I, rest of the person we have come to know but the person who is sitting next to you would like to that person to come Hi. this is shivani she is my daughter and uh, she um, uh, uh, she has to come again shivani has to come again uh, uh, thank you to shivani uh, she has acted like shiv <laughs> uh, help us to come out all of all the troubles which have were there thank you whatever glitches it could have come uh, she has resolved it thank, thank you shivani you so and thank you ma'am thank you okay and tomorrow we have also a session in the evening by mm -hmm. mr uh, pushwinder korav the advocate general himaj uh, madhya pradesh as well as uh, tanveer ahmed they will oh. speak on the uh, murder trials thank you stay connected thank you. thank you wonderful yes thank you ma'am thank, thank you. you so much thanks